Ringo Starr, the blue-eyed, ring-collecting, Bond girl marrying, blisses on me fingers, everybody loves to love him drummer of the Beatles. Enigmatic and iconically charismatic, Ringo charmed his way into the Beatles and of course our hearts with his impeccable timing and compositional style of percussion in rock and roll. Today, we're going to show you 10 very interesting facts about everyone's favorite, or at least top 4, Beatle, Ringo Starr. Let's begin. When Ringo replaced Pete Best as the Beatles' new drummer, some fans were furious. It all happened on a Sunday night, August 1962, at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, where the Beatles had cultivated a decent following. As soon as the crowd realized the sacking of Pete, there was an uproar, people shouting, Ringo out, Pete in, or we want Pete. This is all before Ringo could prove how great he really was, but the crowd was refusing to let them play. The Cavern Club DJ, Bob McGray, recalls there were girls crying in the street saying they would never support the Cavern Club again. So this already sucks for poor Ringo, but the rest of the band was obviously shocked at the reaction. As Ringo sat sheepishly, Paul McCartney attempted some crowd control with his hands in the air, trying to be diplomatic. John didn't pay any attention to it and kept on playing, but George Harrison, the youngest Beatle defended Ringo to a much larger fella named Mickey Flynn by sarcastically mocking him and, well, Mickey Flynn gave George a black eye that night. That crowd must have been pretty shocked when the Beatles with our boy Ringo became the greatest band of all time. They might have thought Pete was the best, but evidently Ringo is a star. After the lukewarm reception of Ringo's Roto Gravier album in September 1976, Ringo was in an uncomfortable emotional state. While Paul was dominating with hit after hit with his new band Wings, Ringo was filling his days with drugs, alcohol, and jet setting around the world, burning through his money. His final cry for help was when he decided to not only shave his head, but also shave his eyebrows. His eyebrows. Initially, when asked, Ringo, what the hell, he responded, I wanted to make sure I didn't have boils on my scalp, but it was a cover for his depression. Later, he candidly opens up about this dark time, saying, I was feeling vaguely insane and drinking some new drink. It was a time when you either cut your wrists or your hair, and I'm a coward. But he wasn't a coward, because it takes a courageous person to continue the fight against depression. His childhood was harrowing. At only six years old, he developed appendicitis. After the appendectomy, he contracted peritonitis, which led to him being in a coma for days. Doctors telling his mother three different times he'd be dead in the morning. Luckily, he survived, but he was in hospital for a year recovering. Then, at 13, he contracted tuberculosis and was sent away to a sanitarium for two years. However, you may find it interesting that while Ringo was in hospital, the medical staff encouraged him to remain active and stimulate motor function. So little Ringo made a makeshift mallet and began to drum on the cabinets by his bed. Thus began his interest in percussion, and also because of his resilience to all these illnesses, he was nicknamed Lazarus, who rose from the dead in the Bible. For a childhood so full of woe, he aged remarkably well, didn't he? If you're lucky enough to meet Ringo Starr, keep in mind that you shouldn't offer to shake his hand, because the simple reality is, he is a germaphobe. And for good reason, after suffering through many people's share of illnesses, Ringo resorts to the hospital handshake, where he may shake your arm, elbow, or just nod and wave. Knowing what we know about his childhood, can you blame him? After John Lennon was tragically murdered in New York, Ringo was the first Beatle to rush to Yoko's side. It is said he immediately packed up and chartered a plane to New York to comfort Yoko and Sean Lennon. It's remarkable that Yoko can be so divisive, but in reality, she is also a woman who has had her husband taken from her, which is a nightmare most can't conceive. And it's commendable that one of John's closest friends was there for his wife after he was gone. That is friendship. Everybody knows Paul is a lefty, but Ringo was as well. However, it was quite common at the time of his childhood for people to try to retrain lefties to being righties because it was seen as the wrong hand. He even played a right-handed drum kit and as he says, I am an emotional player. I got lucky that I bought the first drum set and didn't know any better because I'm left-handed and it was a right-handed kit. And so my style is a little different. Ringo despises drum solos, enough so that Paul McCartney had to convince him to do one for the song The End, 
on the Abbey Road album. Paul says, Ringo would never do drum solos. He hated drummers who did lengthy drum solos. We all did like them. So when he joined the Beatles, we said, ah, what about drum solos then? Thinking he might say, yeah, I'll have a five hour one in the middle of your set. And he said, I hate him. We said, great, we love you. And so he would never do them. But because of this medley, I said, well, a token solo. And he really dug his heels in and didn't want to do it. But after a little bit of gentle persuasion, I said, yeah, just do that. It wouldn't be Buddy Rich gone mad because I think that's what he didn't want to do. It was certainly a shock to many people who had grown up watching Thomas the Tank Engine that Ringo was indeed the narrator for the first two seasons. He also played Mr. Conductor. You can never be as strong and fast as Gordon, but you can be a really useful engine. Ringo left the show in 1990 to focus on his music again with his all-star band. Well, I'll tell you the story because it has a sad beginning, but a happy ending. Maybe it will cheer us all up. One of the most bizarre facts about this lad from Liverpool is the fact that he's never enjoyed a slice of pizza or a warm, spicy curry. The thing is, alongside having such a sickly childhood, Ringo has a host of allergies. He says, I'm highly allergic to onions and garlic and spices. I've never had a pizza, never had a curry. Which makes him doing this Pizza Hut commercial all the more hilarious dancing around with the pizza, knowing full well he has no idea how it tastes. <laughs> to eat our pizza, crust first. Seriously, he's just the best. In 2008, Ringo released a short video explaining that he would no longer be receiving fan mail and any that did come through after the 20th of October that year would be disposed of. Of course, many fans criticized this decision, stating he was too busy for his fans or unappreciative. But Ringo's response to critics makes a lot of sense. He says his choice to ban fan mail was in direct response to an inordinate amount of items which recently appeared for sale on eBay, and to those who repeatedly sent cards and items to be signed. My signature on a scratch rate, someone had screwed onto a shit guitar. Right. And they were selling for three grand. Right, because it had your name on it. Yeah, and I'm saying, no, so I only sign for charity now. I imagine you sign something for a friend so that they can have a tactile memory whenever they see it, not for them to turn a profit over and over again. Ringo probably just felt used. I'm warning you with peace and love, but I have too much to do. So no more fan mail. Thank you, thank you. And no objects to be signed. Nothing. Uh, anyway, peace and love, peace and love. Well, that's all for today, everyone, and we hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment on your favorite Ringo fact. Thanks so much for watching, and special thanks to contributing author Leah Robbins. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on music, such as Why Did Freddie Mercury Write Bohemian Rhapsody? The Story Behind Toto's Africa? And if you're a Beatles fan, well, let's just say this is your channel. Thanks to the amazing patrons who keep this channel alive, and if you're into super, super underground music, then definitely check out The Hollyhobs on Spotify, Apple Music, and everywhere music is streamed. If you want to be notified when new videos are out, at this point you'll have to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and pray that YouTube will recommend anything you actually might want to see. If you have an idea for a video, please be sure to leave a comment. See you next time.